In this tutorial, we're gonna break open this portrait and reveal the universe inside. Hyper-realism at its finest, because the reality is that within each of us is a little universe. Let's get started. With our photo open, the first thing we wanna do is duplicate the background layer. So hit Control or Command J to do that. Let's call this layer Subject. Come over here to the Select tool and just come up to the top where it says Select Subject and click that button. Let's go ahead and create a layer mask with this selection. And now turn that subject layer off. Come back down to the background layer and hit Control or Command J to duplicate it again. And let's call this Content Aware Fill because that's exactly what we're gonna do with this layer. We're gonna fill in the content of our subject with the background. So Control or Command click on the subject mask and then come up to Select, Modify, Expand, and expand this selection by about 10 pixels. And that just made it so that our selection contains about 10 pixels outside of our original selection of our subject. And we wanna do that so that when we fill it in, it doesn't leave this weird outline of the subject. You'll see what I'm talking about right here. Come up here to Edit, Content Aware, Fill. Make sure that everything other than the subject is selected so all of that right there we want to get that if you see on the right that's what it's gonna look like say apply and then say okay now there are gonna be some little anomalies here so we're gonna clean those up with the clone stamp tool but first let's go ahead and hit control or command and select our original content aware fill layer and merge these two layers together by hitting control or command E now let's pull up our clone stamp tool you can hit S to pull that up and I'm gonna bring my flow down to about 40, 45, something like that. I'm just gonna start stamping out these little imperfections on the background. There you go, just like that. Just wanna make it nice and smooth, seamless. Cool, turn your subject layer back on, and now let's hide the layers underneath the subject layer. I wanna see how clean this mask is. And I already know, because I've already done this before, that this mask is not perfect. If you notice, there's like a little black outline outside of the face. And a really neat trick to get rid of that black outline is by setting your brush tool to overlay and making it really soft and then going around the edges with that brush. Now to bring back in these little hairs over here, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna set my brush to white. And look at that, pretty darn good. Make sure to set your brush back to normal though. Many a time have I forgotten to do that and gone crazy because I couldn't figure out what's going on with my brush tool. Once you feel good about your mask, Turn the layers beneath it back on, and then come up and right click on that layer mask and hit apply layer mask. With your pen tool selected, you can hit P to get there and make sure that it's in path mode. Draw a selection inside the face round about where you want it to be cut out. Right click on the path and hit make selection. Let's go ahead and feather this selection a little bit. So let's just do one pixel and then come over here to your selection tool and then right click within that selection and hit layer via cut. And that's just gonna cut that bit out of the layer and then put it onto its own layer. So let's call that new layer face. Hit Control or Command T to bring up your transform box. And let's move this beautiful face up. Now we're gonna create some really cool beveled edges on this face. So come down here to effects and come up to bevel and emboss. So that just created a nice crisp bevel on the face. It's a little harsher than what I would like. So let's go ahead and play around with the settings a little bit. I'm gonna bring the depth down. I don't know, somewhere about like 40. Let's do 40. You see that softened it up quite a bit. I'm gonna set my size just a little bit higher. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger, maybe like 10. Let's go ahead and set the softness to, let's say five. Yeah, cool, just go ahead and say okay. And then if you notice here, it beveled the entire face. If you uh, click off and on, you can see there's like some beveling going on on the top right here. And we really don't want that. We only want it really on the bottom of the cutout. So in order to fix that, we can just come up here to layer, layer style and create layers. And now what this does is create two layers out of that bevel. It has the inner bevel shadows and the inner bevel highlights. And so if you notice, if you turn off and on the highlights, those are not really serving us right now. So let's just go ahead and delete that highlights layer. And on our shadows layer, let's just go ahead and erase any of the bits that we don't need. Come down to subject and do the same thing. So come down to effects, bevel and emboss. And the settings should be the same, so you can just keep them there and then say OK. And again, we're going to separate the shadows and the highlights on that bevel. So come up to Layer, Layer Style, Create Layers. We have the highlights and the shadows. Click them off and on to see which one we want to keep. Doesn't look like we need the shadows in this case, so let's go ahead and delete that layer. And then let's turn off and on the highlights and see where those are. 
You can see like on the neck and stuff, we don't really want those. We don't want anything going on to her shirt. Only on the inside of her face where that cutout is. So let's go ahead and just E, erase her tool, erase all the bits that we don't need. Now we have a nice clean bevel. So now that we've pulled the face off, we've just gotta fill the head with the universe. Come down to the content aware fill layer and then let's drag in our galaxy picture. All these pictures are in the link in the description below. And I'd like to position this to where the swirl is kind of lined up with the curve of the cutout of the face, just like that. That's perfect. Hit enter, and then let's set the blending mode to screen. Now you can still see the hard edges on this guy, so if you just hit control or command and click on the thumbnail of that layer and then come and create a layer mask, we're just gonna paint out those hard edges. So get a really soft brush and paint black on all those edges. If you hit the backslash key, you can see what you're doing on your mask. Just get all those hard edges out of here. We don't want them. I'm gonna set my flow down a bit, soften it up and get those edges. Cool. Backslash again. This looks really cool, but I want to bring out the colors in this galaxy and make them pop. So let's go ahead and first just hit control or command L to bring up the levels. Well, make sure that you're not on your mask like I just was. Make sure you're actually on this. Hit control or command L and let's just drag this slider on the left all the way over not all the way over, but you know, over to the right, so we darken it up a bit. And you see how the colors start to come in? We could even drag this one to the left, this one on the right. We're just basically increasing the contrast here. Round about like that. Cool. Now let's hit Control or Command U to bring up the saturation. And we're gonna drag that guy up to like 25. I want those colors to be popping. Say okay. Well, that looks dope. Let's just bring in one more space layer because I want some more stars coming out of that head. So drag that second space picture in and I'm gonna position this to where the galaxy looks like it's shooting straight out of the head. I like that. Hit enter and set the blending mode to screen once again. And again, we see those hard edges. So let's hit control or command and click on the thumbnail and then create a layer mask and then paint those hard edges out. My flow is still set pretty low, like 31. Painting those edges out. Doop, 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 doop. And we're gonna do the same thing here that we did to the last one. So we're gonna increase the contrast using the levels and we're gonna bring up the saturation. So hit Control or Command L to bring up the levels. Good grief, I did it again on that layer mask. Go back to the thumbnail. Control or Command L again. And drag those levels over. Drag the right, the left slider to the right and the right slider to the left. Just until it looks like those stars are really popping out. Say okay. Again, we're gonna hit Control or Command U to bring up the saturation and bring it up to 25, just like the other one. Wow, that's looking cool. So just my personal preference, I wanna darken this up a little bit with the curves. So I'm just gonna come down here and grab a curves adjustment layer. And I'm just gonna drag this guy down just a little bit and come back to the layers. And I'm gonna go crazy right now with the vibrance. So come and get a vibrance adjustment layer. And I'm gonna just drag that guy all the way over to 100. Yes, I did. Nice. The last thing I'm gonna do is just bring in a texture to tie this all together. So this is the one thing I don't have linked below and that's because I got it from Envato Elements. But you can find something similar in one of the links that I provided below where it says free images. There are all kinds of places where you can find free images on the internet today. So just bring in a texture and then I'm gonna set the blending mode on this one to soft light. That looks Really, really cool. I am loving this one. So there you go. You've got a really neat cosmic portrait. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned some new tips and techniques in this tutorial. Make sure to apply what you learned here today in your future projects. Remember how you can refine a mask by painting on it with your brush set to overlay. This definitely comes in handy when you're working with masks that involve hair and fur. Get creative by using the bevel effect on your layers to make them look three-dimensional. There are an infinite number of ways to get creative in Photoshop. And with each new technique comes a multitude of possibilities. Follow along for more and feel free to reach out in the comments if you have any questions. Until next time.